Hi, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of your Frederish podcast. My name's Gary, and here I am one more time with you all. So tell me, how are you doing? How's been your week so far? You're ready to sit down, cozy up, put a cup of coffee, uh, soda, drink, whatever it takes for you to relax and join us in this interesting conversation in your interesting friday conversation podcast your fredish fredish podcast of course yeah that's it that's all we need you relaxing uh, sitting down closing up being you know cool and and chill and that's it okay today uh we're gonna talk about animes yes japanese cartoons Uh, well, I honestly find it very hard to believe that there are um, people younger than 40 who don't like any anime at all. I mean, like, I'm not saying that everyone under their 40s should be addicted to animes, like me, for example. But I really believe that uh, no one under 30, under their 40s isn't a fan or or doesn't get to have at least some consideration towards one or two or ha half a dozen animes out there. And why is the reason that? The reason is that if you're young enough, uh, you may not know that, but there were lots of Japanese cartoons, aka animes, airing on public TV, on open TV, okay, every day, okay? Uh, most of the animes I know, to be honest, I got to know by watching TV, okay? When I was a teenager, a kid, a little bit older, but, but then I, I stopped watching too much TV when YouTube came around. But truth of the matter is, they were there, okay? They were present in the open uh, programming, okay? Um, which is amazing, okay? I, I dare, I even dare to say, I even take the risk to say that my generation, the, the millennials, um, parenthesis, I recorded videos about it, by the way, very interesting, go check it out right here on this very same podcast, another episode, of course, but anyways, go for it, I, I totally recommend after, as soon as you finish uh, listening to this one, of course, but anyways, I, I dare to say, I risk to say, I take the risk to say that my generation, the, the 30, early 30s or late 30s, kind of uh, had their their um, personality mapped out, okay, carved out, you know, uh, interfered, okay, um, by animes, by the Japanese culture, okay? So this is basically what I want to talk about, okay? Why animes are so special and why they aren't at all mere cartoons okay with all due respect to cartoons i love cartoons american european cartoons they're all great even brazilian cartoons sometimes but there is a special thing towards or about the japanese ones and i would like to discuss this with you right here right now let's do it Well, I'm not gonna talk here in the position of a historian or an expert or someone who done in a extensive research before recording these very words. No, this is a simple conversation and the main target, as I always say, and I, as I will always keep saying, is practice English, okay? This is the main focus here. Let us have this open and, and honest conversation here. There's a space for Commentings, so go go for it. Okay, if I say anything untrue or that you don't agree with, feel free to disagree. Let's agree to disagree, just as usual. Okay, all right. So let's try to talk a little bit about the history of animes in Brazil. Okay, which I believe is the same history of animes in uh, in the Western civilization as Red Hot Chili Peppers would say. This is the end of the world in the Western civilization. That's a horrible joke, but it, I inevitably had this song playing in my mind when I say this. But Western civilization, America, okay? North America, Central America, South America. So that's, that's it, okay? Because as far as I can tell, it all came... Because 
we usually, a quick parallel comment here, we tend to import things from the States. Even these days, even today, but let alone 30, 40 years ago, yeah, there was 100% imported from United States, from the Uncle Sam's land. Um, and I have strong and, and solid reasons to believe that the animes were different, okay? Uh, which I know for a fact. What I know for a fact, though, is that they're equally successful in the United States as they are in Brazil, okay? That's what I can say 100% sure. Uh, nevertheless, um, the, f w the first anime that I have memory, I didn't get to watch it, to be honest with you guys, so I, I don't have any effective memory with that. I will watch one day. Uh, but the, the thing is, the few parts I saw I didn't like very much, although I had the, the toys when I was a kid, but that's another thing. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm talking about the Knights of the Zodiac. Yeah, that's it. I have nothing but huge respect for this anime. It built up a generation. It opened the doors to many other cartoons, right? And of course, the <coughs> second to, got, to get to Brazil, as far as I understand, which happens to be one of my favorites. And one of the, the top uh, favorite of almost everybody or all everybody who's anime lover yes i'm talking about dragon ball so just in case you live on on mars not on earth <laughs> and you don't know what i'm talking about dragon ball is long story long story short uh history of a boy who's uh, called goku whose whose intention is um become a, a, a strong warrior, a strong fighter, and he's a fighting, uh, skillful fighter, you know, although despite of the young age, and uh, he meets a few other characters, and he ends up uh, f finding out that the dragon, he, because he's got a Dragon Ball that he's, his grandfather had given to him, uh, and he finds out that his Dragon Ball is actually a uh, a piece of a magic conjunction of spheres uh, which that once gather together uh, open the room for you to to summon uh, a powerful dragon that can conceive any desires okay you just say say them up and it's yours okay so he <coughs> he embarks in this journey with a girl called Buma and then uh, uh, there's lots of enemies and he loves fighting and he kept, keeps finding enemies stronger and stronger, right? In consequently getting stronger and stronger. And then the whole story uh, revolves around that, okay? Sounds simple, but if you never saw that, you will never understand. I totally recommend. Because it's one of the things, this is one of the cartoons. Guys, I'm talking about Dragon Ball here. I'm not talking about Dragon Ball Z. Or others okay talking about Dragon Ball okay uh, if you haven't if you never watched that you should do that okay because it's a it's a work that got old in a good way okay got old okay okay became a vintage okay not an old thing okay it's totally worth it there are the other reasons why I believe you should watch animes and get your your kids if they're old enough, of course, like 10, 11, 12, not so young, maybe. But anyways, uh, watching these things. Uh, yeah, once Dragon Ball got to Brazil and became a huge success, I didn't dig a research, or I didn't dig up, I didn't make any research just to tell you, and, and it's irrelevant right now, how long it took to, to become a success. But truth of the matter is, it becomes a success, a huge success among the kids and the juvenile public, uh, and even among grown-ups, okay, to be honest. Um, here, I'm talking about the 80s, right? Beginning of the 90s, okay? Because the cartoon was, this cartoon is originally from 1986, if memory serves me well. If not 86, something around the mid-80s, okay? Dragon Ball. 
uh, and it came to Brazil uh, the, the, in the late 80s um, or the early 90s. Anyways, around that period. Um, and of course, it became successful. It got a huge, okay? It got really uh, successful, feverish in Brazil. Um, I remember, I have vivid memories of years later, of course, like in 1998, 1999, but on Saturdays, watching Dragon Ball on, on TV, uh, and man, this is a memory I cherish in the deepest bottle of my heart, okay? Because when I watch it today, the feeling is amazing, let alone when I was a kid. You know, my mind like totally blank, basically, right? In terms of like, wow, you know? Uh, so it, it is, the words cannot describe that. That's what I can say. And also, I was lucky enough to have a friend who was way more addicted in uh, Japanese culture than I am, than I was, than I am, uh, and who happened to have some uh, money uh, situation, you know, a little better than, than mine. And he had bought all of the mangas, okay? Just as a quick translation, if you don't know what I'm talking about, a manga is an HQ, okay? It's a comics, okay? It's what we call Agaki HQ, okay? It's a comics, okay? Japanese comics. That's it. With a few differences, but it's irrelevant right now. And then he would lend it to me, and I not also had seen the, the cartoon on TV, not all the episodes, but 80% of the, the saga. The whole saga uh, but then I got to read till the end or almost the end of it okay um, on my friends with my friends mangas it was an amazing uh, experience guys so this is again I don't mean I don't want to be repetitive here but I cherish this memory from the bottom of my heart okay I really do well, about this, the very same period, and internet was starting to sprout, right? So, and this friend of mine I'm mentioning uh, already had internet connection, so he was way more informed, okay, on through internet than I was. By the way, I didn't have anything similar, anything even close to internet. No cell phone, nothing. I'm talking about 2000, early 2000s, okay? Um, and then not long enough, not long after we found out that go that there was more of that cartoon, that anime, that the main character Goku had grown up and got married. <coughs> Big surprise, disappointment for some of, of us nerds. <laughs> um, and then there was more. That was Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, which I, I, I don't really believe anyone will say would not be a wiser you know like well, i never heard of it it's impossible you know never having heard of it um a few years later my neighbor a few years later already on the internet era so talking about 2010 oh by the way on tv there were lots of cartoons going on you know uh on tv globinho the and you know the, you guys will if you have if you're old enough you will remember and know what I'm talking about but then came Yu-Gi-Oh then came um, and now also during Dragon Ball there were like Shurato, Knights of Zodiac of course I mentioned uh, the Oliver guy the soccer player which I forgot the name in English right now but in Brazil was called Super Campeões okay um, something with Oliver because the name of the main character the football the soccer player you guys know what I'm talking about the Japanese cartoon and, and many others right uh on tv and we were equally addicted to them although nothing would even get close to dragon ball right uh but they were all cool and they were were all watchable then Yu-Gi-Oh came around there's no comparison between Yu-Gi-Oh and uh, and dragon ball because Yu-Gi-Oh is as much it's a much smaller work um in a total totally different thing right but was the first that I got similarly addicted to, 
okay, as I was in Dragon Ball, to be honest. But in the kind of the same universe, and then now years later on the internet era, so I'm talking about 2010, 2011. Uh, oh no, before that, I, on TV that, uh, there was Naruto, okay, which I'm about to talk about. Uh, Naruto, Nar Naruto, <coughs> to be honest, I never spoke, I never speak about it in English, so I think it, Americans will say Naruto, yeah, Naruto, um, it was on TV, you know, I, I was already working when it was airing on TV for the first time, 2006, 2007, so I didn't get to watch much of it on TV, but when I, I, then I went, then I moved out abroad and kind of uh, let it uh, on the fridge, the animes. But then when I came back in 2010, 2011, then I was reintroduced to these things already on the internet era. My neighbor had them all and I started watching Naruto for, you know, the first time for real. And there was a difference in this era because different from watching animes on TV dubbed in Portuguese, now we were watching them subtitled by fans. So, what is the difference be, uh, besides the, the obvious, right? The, the language and the, the letters, the, the words showing up uh, under, you know, the, the screen, below on the, on the bottom of the screen. Uh, what is the difference? The difference is that when you have these things, these words, they are made to preserve Okay, probably from Japanese descendants, I believe. First, because usually people fluent in this in, in Japanese are Japanese descent, most of them at least, uh, let alone. So what was that difference uh, about the culture, okay? Uh, and I could be speaking about more animes, but this is not the point here. If you guys show me some love enough about it, some thumb ups enough, <laughs> about this topic, I may come back with more. But the, the point here is like to talk about the co how has the Japanese culture influenced us Posi positively, positively, okay? Sorry, positively, in a positive way. Um, I think it's not no, no news to anybody how disciplined, how conservative, how... Um, serious, dedicated, you know, and how solid how the people, the Japanese people are and how solid the Japanese culture is consequently, right? Not to mention rich, okay? Samurais and everything. Honestly, I don't know much about their culture, not as much as I would like to, but I know enough to know and respect, you know, to give a big respect to that. Not to say, not saying it's perfect, of course, it has all cultures, as every culture, it has its ups and downs, but the ups are the discipline, the, you know, gotta be respectful towards elderly people, <clears throat> you know, got to train, get, you have to, to improve, you have to, of course, this is an element, the, the next element I'm gonna say, like going after your dreams, following your dreams. This is an element of the, the novels, of stories, you know, it's necessary for the characters to have a goal, a target, a meaning, uh, about their lives, right? But they they had it, you know, in spite of anything, they had it, you know, they're, because usually in the Western, Western civilization, anyways, <laughs> the Western stories, the mission, the target was more like rescuing someone who was kidnapped, okay? Or to restore the peace because evil came along, you know? We didn't have Forgive me if I'm being unfair here, but I don't have memory of witnessing stories in which the characters had dreams. Like Naruto, for example, he wants to be a Hokage. Goku, he wants to be the strongest man, you know? Uh, we didn't have much of that, you know? Kind of a quote-unquote vain uh, uh, w uh, wishes, you know? Um, and this is awesome. This was awesome, in my opinion, for our generation, because our generation grew up going like, hey, whatever it is that I wanna be in my life, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna fight for it with the best I can, you know? I'm gonna do my best to, to get it, to reach it, right? 
Uh, this, is, this is the impression I have, which perhaps I don't see much in the new generation. No, no judgments, just an observation. Uh, and maybe, who knows? The reason is because the new generation doesn't have animes airing on TV. Maybe you guys, talking to you youngsters, <laughs> you're in your 20s, you're totally welcome here, by the way, of course. But anyways, um, maybe you guys are watching even more animes on your cell phones. I don't know. Tell me here on the comment section below. But that's it, you know? I'm not gonna say the new generation doesn't, the current generation doesn't have it, but ours had, okay? Um, and I honestly believe it has positively impacted our culture that the impact, the positive impact is what we have today in, in the country, okay? Uh, what does we have today in the country, despite of the flaws, despite of all the BS? Uh, we have a much better country today. If you take back, if you, you travel back in time with me, I always talk about it, I know, but like 20 years ago, you know, things were way worse. Okay, of course, technology came, there's, you know, I'm not saying animes did the whole thing. Of course not. That's not to say I'm not crazy. But they had a significant, in my opinion, they had a significant role uh, carving the culture of the youngsters, you know, getting them to go after their dreams and not waiting for it to come to them, for the, the dream to come to them. Or worse than that, not even having a, a target in life, you know. Uh, and this is very important. This is very important. Uh, and this is the reason why I recommend you to not only let your kids, again, 10-year-olds, 12-year-olds, perhaps animes, the ones, at least the ones I'm talking about, aren't for kids in their, you know, uh, six and sevens, you know, like, no, maybe not. Too much violence, too much, you know, uh, extreme content uh, for them but for 12 year olds for teenagers it's fantastic you know believe me they'll see violence worse violence on TV on the on the local news on the on, uh, at noon you know <laughs> um, in terms of violence right other than that no I mean the new ones yeah but the, the old ones not much sex appeal there is something that which is not bad at that you know per se but okay uh but nothing compared to the western to what the western um artistic pattern has turned to okay so this is why i really think of course you will learn things you will be uh hooked by fantastic stories amazing characters um the energy of you know the the the, the draws the drawings you know the how they draw the characters after all we're talking about cartoons right um, it's just fantastic it's different it's a, a a unique and original style you know they managed to develop that the Japanese guys they have adopted lots of aspects of the Western civilization no chili peppers here by the way. <laughs> Uh, but they were pretty and fantastically <clears throat> original uh, on the, the core of the thing, right? So um, that alone would make it uh, in a worth uh, of enjoying the, the, the work, the, you know, the, 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 the project, not to mention the rest. And this is all for this episode. I really thank you one more time for your lovely company. I'll be here next week waiting for you and ready for another topic, another discussion. Thank you so very much. See you there. Bye.